My name is Marc Garcia Puig. I'm sensor and simulation engineer in Kala Simulator. And in this opportunity, I will talk about sensors and what is new in Kala regarding them. I will first introduce the new RGB camera upgrade with its new parameters and how to use them. Then I will talk about the new sensors and their implementations. Let's start with the new RGB camera upgrade. The main reason behind why artists take so much for detailing all our different maps with new assets and caring so much about illumination and the environment is just because the RGB sensor, right? We know how important is the sensor for perception. We are using such a big beast like Unreal Engine, just because we want good visual fidelity. It's critical for our project and we are constantly iterating over this feature, improving it step by step. A few months ago, some of these iterations happened, leaving a good amount of new capabilities for this sensor. The new camera supports several useful features such as lens distortion, different exposure modes and depth of field. All of this takes advantage of the Unreal Engine capabilities to ensure maximum integration with the engine, so we can achieve good performance. We are adding new features like uh, noise functions, like chromatic aberration, but keeping mimic with the Unreal cameras and their parameters, so we can evolve with it and maybe in the future use RaiCast or any new rendering technology that Unreal can provide. I will briefly talk about these ones you can see in the slide right now. Distortion, exposure modes and color correction. Lens distortion and chromatic aberration are the main noise functionalities for the sensor. They can be customized and combine each other and work as expected with all other configurations. Here we can see a video with this new feature in action. To properly see the effect, check out the street light in the top right corner of the video, here. First we see the normal RGB, then the RGB plus lens distortion, an exaggerated one, and now RGB plus chromatic aberration, also exaggerated. Now a combination of, of the previous ones. You can see the distortion here on the corners. They also work fine with depth and also semantic segmentation. Now we provide two exposure types. The manual one, which takes the f-stop or the inverse of the aperture, the ISO and the shutter speed, like a conventional camera. And then we have the auto exposure which takes other parameters to achieve the effect that you can see in the video. You can see the color of the scene is slowly adapted depending on the bright uh, the images. Then we have the color correction to simply achieve different color results. This can be useful for some of you that work in perception to create some quick and cheap variability in your data. Here we play with the image temperature, tint, slope and toe. Among this, we've exposed, we've exposed few other camera attributes which can create fine details such as tip of field, motion blur and blade count. And of course you can configure all of these parameters I've just mentioned from the client side. More in depth, I will now show you how to spawn, use and configure them. So for those of you who don't know, in order to instantiate a camera or another type of sensor in Carla, we recommend using the Python API. It is really easy to use and works out of the box. If you prefer, you can still use the C++ API too. But in this case, we will focus on the Python API. So first, we just get the description of the desired sensor, which is called Blueprint. In this case, we are searching for an RGB camera. Then we just need to use the function spawn actor, which takes as a parameter the previous Blueprint, the location where it will be spawned, and finally the parent in case it is attached to something, like a car. Mention that the spawn transform is relative to the parent in case it is provided, otherwise it is in world coordinates and the sensor will be statically placed in the world. Then 
in order to decide what to do with this data, you will only need to call the, the function listen. That will set a callback to a function. This one. That will be called each time a new data arrives from the sensor. In this case, we just only store the data as an image into the disk. And that's it. These are all the configuration parameters just for the RGB camera. Some of them, such as the lens distortion ones, are shared with other camera-based sensors like the semantic segmentation. More in-depth, an explanation of, on what they do can be found in our documentation in the link below. In order to use them, here you have an example of how to instantiate an RGB camera with some of the previous parameters. In this case, a field of view of 75 degrees, a shooter speed for the camera of 60, and a bit of chromatic aberration to create some nice noise effect. Getting the blueprint and spawning, and spawning it, it is exactly the same as before. Now, let me present the new sensors. I will perform a brief introduction to the ones you can see on your screen, the IMU, the radar, and the DBS. Let's start with the simplest one. The IMU refers to an inertial measurement unit. This one is composed of an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a compass. It runs on server side, it has default noise functions, and like the other sensor, the tick time is configurable. I'm sure you will find handy to have it integrated natively. Here I have made a quick and simple visualizer using the Python API to properly see the IMU values changing. At the left, the accelerometer, which tells us the evolution of the velocity over time. We can see the three components, X in red, Y in green, and Z in blue. At the right, we have the gyroscope that shows the rotation velocity of the sensor, roll in red, pitch in green, and yaw in blue. You can see how the yaw blue line in the gyroscope changes when the vehicle turns. Also, you can see um, the peaks in the accelerometer when I collide with uh, something here. Instancing and using it is basically the same that we made before with the RGB sensor, but in this case we will search for the sensor.other.imu. And everything else is done the same except for the IMU data, obviously. The IMU, alongside with the GNSS, takes advantage of the new generic noise system we implemented on the server side that can be used for all the sensors, in case it is implemented for the sensor and it makes sense for it to have it. It is like the covalent for the lens distortion seen before in the cameras. It is prepared to be deterministic and is computed on the server side, but can be parameterized from the client side. So this means that if you have multiple clients connected to the server, they all will receive the same sensor output. By default, we are using a normal distribution for that, but you can change the code to adjust the noise for a more accurate model, if this were required. Adding this noise to the IMU uses the same methodology that adding it to the RGB cameras. You only need to set the correct attribute to the blueprint before spawning it. And again, everything else will, will just work as expected. We have also ded dedicated some time unifying sensors that were computed in the client, like the GNSS and the IMU. Now these computations are happening on the server side to free some load from your client nodes. This also ensures that the data that your client is receiving is the same regardless of the applied noise. Now, the radar. It is another new sensor that has been recently added to Carla. I will not explain how a real radar works, but in short, it is a detection system that uses radio waves to determine the range, angle, or velocity of the objects. Multiple radars can be set to a car in order to provide valuable information of the surroundings. This radar has a main loop, the one you can see on the right. This is the main detection range of a given radar and the one we aim to simulate. Here I have a video where you will see an example of the radar detections on the Carla. As a visualization, the detections are colored using the color palette on the left. White means the object has the same velocity as the radar in relation to the radar orientation. Blue means the object moves away from the radar. And red means the object is approaching to the radar. 
This happens the same regardless of the radar velocity towards the radar direction. So if my car is moving the same velocity as another car in front of me, it will be detected as white. Otherwise, if a car is lower than me, or it is driving towards me, it will appear as red. The way our radar works is the following. Giving objects with velocity, the radar just cares about the velocity of these objects projected in the direction where it is facing. So we will work with the project vector of the object's velocity with the radar direction. Just like that. Each frame, a certain amount of ray casting, is randomly shooted matching the lobe uh, shape of the radar. The ones that collide with their something, they get the velocity of the object in relation to the sensor velocity. And this is the information that will be received on the client side. Here I have colored everything to match the, previ the previous video. Once again, spawning a radar is exactly the same but changing the blueprint you are searching on. In this case, by sensor.other.radar. It also changes the data it's received, of course. Our radar runs on CPU using Unreal Raycast. This means it also runs on server side. Like all the other sensors, it has a configurable tick time and some specific radar configurations like lobe shape or the frequency. The current limitations are that it is not physical accurate compared with a real leader. This is because we are not computing the scattering or the realistic interaction with different materials. Also, the raycast is not perfect with our vehicles and pedestrians since they use animated meshes. We are still searching a way to improve it. Now I'm happy to introduce the new DBS approach that has been recently added to Carla. This was not in our roadmap, but since we received a community pull request, we decided to include it into our latest release. The DBS is an event-based sensor that basically measures the changes of the intensity asynchronously, and can be used for high-speed scenarios and high-dynamic range environments. Our implementation runs on CPU, and all the computation is done in the server side. As a future work, and to increase performance, we could investigate how to port it into a shader so it will use the GPU instead. And finally, you can spawn it like other sensors, but in this case using sensor.camera.dbs. That was a superficial update about what we've done so far regarding the new sensor simulation. Now as a future work, we're really interested into what Unreal 5 can provide to Carla, and we want to investigate its potential as a new rendering backend for the simulator. As always, and alongside the R team, we will also focus on the performance improvements and at the same time achieving better illumination, as it is the key for realism. Finally, if you are into sensors and you like this presentation, I recommend you to check out the external sensor interface presentation, done by my colleague Daniel Santos. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed um, the presentation. If you want to join our community, feel free to use our Discord to direct contact with us.